So, hours before we came on air at this time yesterday, a picture of utter mayhem was unfurling at the headquarters of the Labour Party here in Abuja. As an astonished public looked on in disbelief, furious Labour Union members broke through police lines to storm and disrupt a meeting of the party's National Working Committee, with the presidential candidate and ostensible party leader Peter Obi in attendance. They called it the Abure Must Go protest, aimed at forcibly ending the chairmanship of Julius Abure. That issue has been in simmering dispute for some months now, but it reached boiling point on Tuesday with an unprecedented attack on the Labour Party headquarters. So what should have been a reconciliation conversation degenerated into chaos as the Labour militants charged the building and law enforcement deployments were forced to fire tear gas canisters to bring the situation under control. A situation which now suggests to many observers that the Labour Party is steadily descending into anarchy. And so tonight the political cost of that mayhem is being calculated for the Labour Party, for its embattled chairman Julius Abure, and for its popular 2023 presidential candidate Peter B. Here's a brief look at how yesterday's disruptive events unfolded. which His Excellency knows very well, is that the tenure of Abure and his uh, working NWC. committee, NWC, has ended. So effectively by the 10th of June this month. And you know that there can't be any vacuum in the leadership. Unfortunately, all entreaties, all approaches, including inviting Abure and his people to the even stakeholders meeting where even it was brokered by INEC that Abure signed an NLC sign that when the time comes come together to conduct an inclusive and expansive convention. convention. Unfortunately, Abure decided to do without NLC even after having signed an agreement. We are all members of one family. Okay. I give me about the family. Well, we, we don't know who is agree and who is not. Families disagree, like I told you before. You do disagree with your wife. I do the same thing. So all of us disagree. These are members of the same family. That's why I came to see them. The meeting today was conveyed at my instance. And if you were inside that meeting, I preached only one thing, that I've come to start the work of reconciling the family. That's Mr. Peter B. there, and before him, of course, Abdul Wahid Omar. Well, for more insight into what happened and what's likely to happen next, I'm joined now in the studio by the man who led those protests to the Labour Party's headquarters in Abuja and who you saw a clip of there, Abdul Wahid Omar, who's chairman of the NLC's Transition Committee and is a former president of the Nigeria Labour Congress. And in our off-site studio, we're also joined by the Deputy National Chair of the Labour Party, Ayo Oloran Femi. Thank you very much indeed to both of you for coming in. And let me come to you first, uh, Mr. Omar. Tell us more about what was stoking your anger and why you felt the need to lead members of the Labour Union to storm that meeting on Tuesday. Well, thank you very much. In the first place, let me correct some misconception. It is not Labour Union, it is not the NLC that uh, I led. It is the National Transition Committee 
And NLC is just one of the stakeholders that, uh, uh, is, that made up the transition committee because all the stakeholders came together. And we were there not on protest. We were there in, on a peaceful mission. We were very surprised with what we met because we informed the securities that we are going there to ask transition committee put in place by the people that, are, that ought to have put that in place. Unfortunately, we met some resistance. By the time we got to the gate, the gate was locked and our people were now demanding that, why? Open this gate for us to enter because this is our place. And, and in the process of trying to gain entry, you, you felt the need to transgress the law in order to make your position felt. It's not a question of transgressing the, the law. Well, some, uh, some people, naturally, when you have a, a crowd like that, in fact, you have to do a lot to control it. Some people felt uh, uh, disappointed by being locked out of their own property. So um, when they started, we even had to stop them because it was not our intention. To, to be violent. If we had, uh, well, stones and even uh, uh, petrol bombs were thrown at us. Some of us sustained some injuries. Yeah, but we saw you people from your side throwing stones. That's what we saw on no, video. No, it was people from outside and from inside that were throwing stones to us, those of us outside. Not the other way around. Right, okay. Well, um, let me come to you, Mr. Oloran Femi. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. And um, thank you for um, your patience and uh, waiting for us to get to you. I mean, did you attend, were you at that meeting yesterday? Yes, very well. Right, okay. Uh, how threatened did you feel at that meeting by the protesters who stormed the event? Because, I mean, looking at the video, it looked pretty much like that meeting was under attack, was it? Well, there's, there's a criminal action that took place yesterday. Um, and um, we must learn how to abide by the law, by the rules. Uh, the Labour Party that uh, my brother there is talking about, it has a law. And uh, of course, in that constitution, uh, it's very clear, Article 7 there, say the constitution shall be, shall be supreme. And if the constitution is supreme, he should tell you or tell Nigerians who constituted the, the National Transition Committee that he's, talk, that he's talking about. In the constitution, do you have anything like Transition Committee? Do you have anything like stake, stakeholder in the constitution? The constitution has organ. The, at the national level, we have the National Working Committee, you have the neck of the party, and you have the national convention. These are the decision-making organ. They are the highest decision-making organ of the party is the national convention. So NSC does not have a role, apart from having just three uh, statutory uh, members at the, at, the, at, the, at the level of neck and at the level of a uh, national convention. Just as TUC also has three in the, uh, in, in, in the NEC and the National Convention. So who gave the audacity, who gave NSC that audacity to say he is, uh, is constituting a stakeholder committee, I mean, a, a stakeholder meeting that is, not, that, is not, that is not known to the law? So if in Nigeria, if Nigeria Labour Congress continue like this, it would therefore mean that it doesn't obey rules. And of course, what they did yesterday, in a, in a clear society, some people should go to jail. That is trespass. The NSC, the TUC, and uh, the other social democrat organizations and Nigerian people, including farmers, including artisans, including professionals, the own Labour Party. Where do you see it in the Constitution of Labour Party that, okay, the, Labor, uh, the NSC will have such and such and such role to play? So why are they practicing? I mean, they are simply medicine, medicine interloper. However, we know that these are people and we run on people. Labour Party, we run on people. We need numbers to be able to win the next election. Uh, let, let, me, let me just briefly interrupt you there because your microphone is distorting a little and I think they're going to try and um, 
fix it a little bit, but we, we got everything you said, so not to worry. We, we can hear what you were saying. Let, let me come to you, Mr. Omar. Did you get a response to what Mr. Lauren Femi was saying? Yes, yes very much. Uh, well, I'm happy he mentioned the issue of criminality. May, maybe when the chiefs are down, we shall know who is perpetrating criminality. In the first instance, he is referring to the issue of uh, NLC. It is not NLC. Now, what happened was that uh, I know what they are trying to do. In, 2020, uh, in 2018, there was a consent judgment delivered by a high court judge. In that consent judgment, the judge acknowledged that NLC is the owner of Labour Party. And uh, the consent judgment arose out of the agreements uh, by two factions that they now decided to come together, withdraw all court cases, and now work together. Based on that, the judge now delivered this judgment. And at the end, he mandated that the, the Labour Party, in conjunction with NLC, should now conduct an all-inclusive and expansive convention. That was in 2018. Now, some, somehow, uh, what they tried to do was to circumvent that, uh, uh, that judgment and never went back to it. And instead, they went ahead and now uh, to have, uh, to have uh, amended the constitution. And now they came up with a constitution that is reading uh, 2019. Without implementing the judgment, they now decided to amend the constitution to remove certain things, including the, the way the judge acknowledged that the NLC is the honor. Because now, who's they? When you say they decided I'm to amend the I'm talking Abure and, his, uh, and right. his people. But you were supporting Abure until very recently. Yes, we were supporting him as much as he was obeying the laws of the land and the rules and the constitution of the, of the party. But you're just saying now that he, he wasn't obeying the, the court yes, order, which, he, which was given in yes, 2018. That, of course. But you were supporting him after that. And, and let me also continue from there. Yeah. He did not do that he did not implement and he did not agree to come together with other uh, other uh, stakeholders to implement the consent judgment and the, right, instead of that they now amended the constitution to remove certain things so that they will now be bold enough to claim that nobody owns a uh, 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 labor party including nlc now in 2022 when abure sought an extension, which was granted, in fact, it was even the NLC president that uh, acknowledged that, okay, let us give him the extension at least to pass presidential election in order not to allow the party to suffer. But when the time also came for Abure to now relinquish the position or conduct a convention, a proper convention, he also circumvented that and now went to Newe and did what they call what they call a national convention, violating every rule, even in the new constitution they, they, uh, they amended. And this did not stop. There was a time because there were agitations, but mainly by NLC. Then there was a peace that was broadcast by the Independent National Elect uh, Electoral Commission between Abure and his group and on one side and NLC and TUC on the other side. This was signed by Abure himself that they should now come together, appoint other, other members of the Board of Trustees and also conduct an all-inclusive and expansive convention. They, he never contacted any other stakeholder, especially the Nigeria Labour Congress. And what we saw was what they call a convention that was, uh, was held in Newi, which never conformed with the provisions of the Constitution. In the first place, a, com a convention of Labour Party that I know is, comprises so many participants, designated partic participants by the, by the uh, Constitution. 
a lot of them, in fact, 90% of them were not there. Right. Okay. Well, let, let me give Mr. Lauren Femi a chance to respond to this. Um, I, I'm hoping that your microphone is better now, although, as I said, not to worry, because we heard everything you said previously. It was just marginally distorted. But do you have a better tally of what Mr. Um, Omar is saying about the history and the evolution, the his alleged transgressions of Mr. Julius Abure, and what is actually happening as far as that is concerned, because I am presuming that you're in the same camp with Mr. Abure. Yeah, thank you. Um, you see, when life goes on for many years, truth will just catch up within a minute. That is exactly what is happening. Um, the consent judgment he's talking about, you should present it. The, it's just like NSC and NSC taking themselves to court. Did you see anything TUC there? TUC was not there. And secondly, the, that judgment, did it say you should, not, you should do things outside the constitution of the party? Bring the, the constitution before 2019 and check it. That has, what, the changes that are, the evolution that has come uh, through uh, uh, constitutional amendment, they are infinitesimal, very small. And so you can't say because there was a, a convention in 2019 that also amended the constitution. Of course, the convention was performing its own duty. Uh, let me tell you, in 2022, precisely in 2021, the TU set up, reorganized its political commission. And we, I became the chairman of the uh, uh, TUC political commission with a single mandate that, look, we should go and organize ourselves into a very solid political party so that we don't continue to agitate on the street. Uh, blaming them and uh, condemning them will no longer be a solution to our problem, but we should also participate in act of governance. And that was the basis that we decided at, uh, at, TUC, at the level of TUC political commission to liaise with uh, the NSC political commission through Commander Yuba Waba. We had a series of meetings which seems not to be working. While we were doing this, NSC was preparing to float another political party or to join with uh, uh, the NC Front and all of that, ADC, to go and form another political party. I said, we can't be doing this when we have our own political party, Labour Party. And I told them clearly that if NSC is not serious, we, TUC, we are ready to run with Labour Party. And because of that, they saw that TUC was serious in what they were doing, and they now encouraged the reconciliation that took place. Do you know what they did? You, I'm glad he mentioned now that NSC TUC. Did you see uh, TUC signature in that document? Even my name was included in that and signed by NSC. Am I an affiliate of NSC? I don't belong to NSC. I'm of TUC. Will NSC send my name to the Labour Party as Deputy National Chairman representing TUC? TUC is not a department under the Labour Party, I mean, under NSC. So the mischief is enormous. And so it's catching up with them. That is exactly what is happening. And, okay, the Dan Wanya who led the, this thing had problem with NSC. Absalam Salam had problem with NSC. Abri is also having problem with NSC. All of them are NSC. TUC are never... So TUC basically, are, basically, sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Lauren yeah. Femi, basically... The impression that we're now getting is that all these things were simmering underneath, but the Labour Party swept all of them under the carpet in order to present what appeared to be a united front to the Nigerian people for the 2023 election. But as soon as you lost that election, all those divisions started to come to the fore. No, not, that's, not, that's not what happened. That's not what happened. We, we, we genuinely came together. But there are some factors within the NSC, you know, who are also working like the, he talked about uh, BOT, the list of BOT. Some of the people in the BOT list sent to Labour Party are members of APC. How do you expect Abure to adopt that list of people who are in APC, who are also in the presidential campaign committee council of Tinubu Shetima to be board, mem I mean, trust, uh, board of trustee of uh, Labour Party? Can that work? And we said, look, we need to do things properly. But because some people are true, truly, truly full of some kind of uh, deception, 
They want to do things in order to deceive others to have what they want to do. But this time around, the caliber of people in the Labour Party will not allow it to. Because Nigerians are looking at us, Nigerians are watching us, they are expecting so much from us. And we are ready to give the best we can give. And that is the situation. We are resisting this for the very first time in a very, very serious way, in a, in a very, in a, in a very serious, serious manner. Right. That our constitution, that our constitution must prevail. It's interesting bring, bring that... The constitution, bring the constitution of 2011, right. I mean 2014. You see the same thing. It's and interesting. Talking, it's interesting I'm talking about uh, that, that both the conventions. Sides, right. Ninety percent of the people who are supposed to be at that convention attended the convention. Right. So what are we talking about? Well, it's, you have it's, you have uh, you have the state chairman, state secretary, five delegates from each state. You have uh, the deputy governor of Abia State. All the House of Assembly members attended. House of Red members attended. Some senators attended attended, you know, everybody that are supposed to be at that, attended the convention. The, the, the uh, comrade, uh, uh, what I have that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that is talking, can, is not qualified to be at the convention by virtue of the constitution. So are we going to carry people who are ex this and ex that? I mean, ex candidate, ex candidate, ex candidate, you put, put, put them together and you say they are stakeholders. Right. I well, okay. Uh, I, I, think you, I think you've made that point, and I'm going to give Mr. Omar a chance to. I mean, the, the, the key, the point here really is that one person says this, the other says that, and it just ends up confusing the public. But let me get your sense of um, your reaction to what Mr. Lauren Febby has been saying, Mr. Omar. Well, I, I'm, I'm glad he was talking about uh, people telling lies. And uh, once they tell lies, they will, they will, soon, it will, they will soon be caught up with the, their lies. He was talking about, uh, about uh, the establishment of a uh, Labour Party as if TUC was a, a party to the establishment of Labour Party. That is a false uh, uh, assertion. Right, but, but let's just bring this up to date because okay. it's going to be you saying something, the other one, and, and we, the yeah. public, are not privy yeah. to the issues that yeah. took place at that point. Let's yeah. come to that conversation. Where's the, where's the place of? Where's the no, place hold of? Hold on Sesca? a second, Mr. Lauren Femi. Let, let's let's give him a chance to respond. Let, okay. Let's bring it up to date um, with the issue around the convention. Yeah that took place in Anambra State. <laughs> yes. Um, what is your reaction to what Mr. Lauren Femi is saying, that the party was properly represented and all the people who were supposed to be there were there, and that was where Mr. Abure was effectively re-elected? For us, officially, there was no convention in, in, in a way because they, it did not follow due process. Like I started saying, that a convention of Labour Party, the Constitution provides that it should, it should be bottom up. It, is, it should start with Congresses at Wards level. And we have over 8,000 uh, wards in this country. And then from there, you now move to local government level. You also co uh, co uh, conduct Congresses. And then when you finish with local governments, you also move to the state and also conduct state Congresses electing in each instance electing leaders at the levels it is only when you do that that you will now be able to organize a national convention and as i was saying earlier he said 90 percent of uh, of the designated participants i'm not talking about delegates i'm talking about designated participants to the national convention of labor party first the entire National Executive Council are designated to participate in the National Convention. If we have sitting governors and their commissioners and their uh, special advisors and so on, if we have a, a sitting president, his deputy, the Senate and so on, assuming we don't have all this, but you go also to the State uh, uh, Executive Council, all members of state executive council are, are designated participants at the convention, and which means you have at least 30, uh, 17 people multiplied by the number of states and FCT. You also have delegates, which is the prerogative of the National Executive Council to determine 
whether five or ten or two or eight, whatever. And then you, uh, every chairman and secretary of local government chapter of the, of the party uh, are also designated members, I mean participants at the convention. And, and again, the party is a national party. It's not a, re a sectional party. It's not a religious party or a, a, a party for what a segment of this country. What we need to see is that every state, every local government is represented as required or as provided by the Right. By so the in, in that regard, you consider that convention to have been a kangaroo convention. Exactly. Right. right. Okay. Let's move this conversation on because we'll be stuck here like we're stuck in the mud for, for a long period of time. Mr. Lauren Femi, how much does all this, I mean, you, you portray yourself as a real staunch member of the Labour Party who clearly is concerned about public impressions and the public's reaction. How much does this further support the growing public impression that the Labour Party is, to say the least, very untidy at the moment and is not to be trusted with any form of leadership and effectively bears the shame and the untrustworthiness of Nigeria's political class. I mean, does that make you feel downbeat? My dear brother, we, when, 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 when you have enemies within, you will, you will also not be happy. Of course, the constitution that uh, my brother is uh, quoting there is not the constitution of the Labour Party. That must be the constitution of EPC or constitution of uh, uh, PDP. Those are the parties they are used to. For our own party, we have different tenor with local government chairmen and uh, uh, state, uh, state, uh, state councils, I mean state chapters of the, of the party. They have different tenor. So there's no way you will dissolve a, the, a state esco whose tenor has not expired. And there's no way you dissolve a local government esco whose tenor has not expired. In our own constitution, it's unique. We are not practicing, you know, this, uh, this constitution thing is not generic. I mean, uh, when you are comparing it to other political parties. So APC have their own constitution. PDP has their own constitution, and uh, some, of this, uh, some of the people that we're talking about are used to, their, to the constitution of APC and PDP. Of course, that is what they are citing. So now, Nigerians, to help us, we are a, the fastest growing party in Nigeria, and we are expected to face challenges the way we are challenging. We are willing to reconcile everybody because we need people. And that is the word of uh, our former presidential candidate, uh, Comrade Peter Obi, that we are ready and we are going to reconcile as many people as we can and bring in more people who will make the party to deliver Nigeria from this charcoal of bad governance. So um, we are not happy. Right. Okay. Let me, let me come in there and ask you a quick question before I come back to Mr. Omar, because you mentioned Pito be there. The impression that's been given, and you can correct that if it's wrong, but the impression that's been given is that Mr. Bure, as well as Mr. Papa and Mr. Arabambi, have all come together to oppose Mr. Pito B. In, in his quest to be the, the person who would lead the party. And it's also raising questions about whether or not he's going to become the candidate of the party in 2027. What is your reaction briefly, so I can come back to Mr. Omar, to that suggestion that Mr. Obi is being um, opposed by people like yourself, as well as Abure, Apapa, and Arabambi, and so on? Well, whoever is saying that is, the enemy, is an enemy of uh, Nigeria. And anybody that is also amplifying it uh, cannot be less enemy. Um, uh, is the figment of imagination of whoever you know, propagated uh, uh, such opinion. As far as we are concerned, uh, yes, Arabambi and the Apapa group, they, 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 they have chilled their sword, they have uh, swallowed, they have vomit, they have said all they said against Abuli is no longer true. And of course, it is, it is on the strength of the allegation that NSC is also raising, has been raising a lot of dust. So we appreciate the fact that uh, they have now seen light and they said, no, we can no longer continue like this. However, you know, decision of the uh, neck uh, is sacrosanct. They were suspended, some were uh, expelled. And of course, the reconciliation also includes looking at all of these things and see how we can 
uh, reconcile everybody back into the system. So the idea of uh, uh, working, to get, uh, working with Arabambi and uh, Apapa to disqualify uh, our presidential candidate or uh, you know, working against him uh, is not tenable here. Uh, we are committed. Uh, our presidential candidate understands the ideology of the Labour Party and is ready and willing to run with that ideology. And he has been showing it from the length and breadth of this country, going to the north to provide for the need of uh, the poor people, giving them water, giving them uh, boho, giving them uh, assistance in every, uh, in every, uh, as much as he can. That is a reflection of the socialist agenda that the Labour Party stands for. And so for anybody to now say we are going to, we are going to dish that kind of candidate, uh, they are, they are, they are, is the figment of their imagination. Thank you for that. Them. Thank you, you for that. that right. Thank you for that. Let me bring Mr. Omar in. I mean, you, you've had Mr. Aloran Femi. What sense are you getting? Because you, you remain quite stoic in your position that Mr. Abure has to go. What sense are you getting from various parts of the Labour Party across the country about how they view the continued chairmanship of Julius Abure? I, I think generally, like, like I told you, it is not... Nigeria Labour Congress. Nigeria Labour Congress does not relate with any political party, not even the Labour Party directly. That is why they have the National Political Commission. What, whatever or whatever NLC wishes to relate with any political party, particularly the Labour Party, they do it through the National Political Commission. But let me get back to what he said about the uh, uh, participation in the in the convention. Now, you have, you, have just shown, you have just shown the population of a national convention of a political party that is number three in the hierarchy of uh, political parties in this country. But the issue, when he was talking about the particip participation of chairmen and secretaries of local, every local government in Nigeria, which are 770, uh, four local governments where you are expected to have a chairman and secretary which will amount to about 1,400 and something and eight local government chairmen and secretaries alone. I, I wonder how, how many people you saw in that, uh, that picture that uh, is depicting the National Convention of Nigeria of Labour Party. Right, okay. Well, let me just put it this way. Um, as I just for very quickly, I can hear Mr. Olorun yeah. Femi. I can see your mouth moving. Just yeah. say a few words because we're out of time. Yeah, I, I didn't say local government. And the, the constitution is very clear. Members to convention include members of NEC. Members of NEC are chairmen and secretaries. And the delegates from the state, which will be chosen from among the state escorts, five five were chosen across the nation. All right? The, all the commissioners that we have attended, all the House of Assembly members attended, all the House of Rep members, at least I recorded out of 38, I recorded about 28. Yeah. Senators, I, I think senators you, were there. Right, I think. And, you, and, you, uh, and, la and lastly, very TUC, quickly, please. TUC in 1999 with Frederick Ebert Foundation and the uh, American Solidarity Center, started the discussion of forming a political party. And that meeting started in Akure at Owena Hotel. The next meeting took place, uh, another meeting took place in Oshobo, Osho State. Uh, and I, so, I think, I so think, for I, somebody to sit down and say TUC was not in okay. existence, uh, I think, it betrays, I think, it betrays the fact that right, okay. they never uh, would send the senior staff I think you've to, made your point. To, to, to exist as a labor center. I think you've made your and, point, and, Mr. Lauren Femi. We can't obviously keep dragging <laughs> on, 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 on. Uh, I think one thing uh, is clear to the public, and though it's the public, we obviously take their position here. This sounds like what we see in all the other parties in Nigeria that Nigerians have been critical of. They were looking to labor as the new beacon of hope, a party with some form of innovative thinking, but you're appearing just like all the others, engaging in 
you know, accusations of illegalities, appearing to be lawless, holding what some have called kangaroo conventions and others say are proper conventions, violating your own party rules. So clearly, so soon after millions of Nigerians gave you their confidence by giving you millions of votes, you've failed them. So the no. challenge for you now is how you're going to make yourself restore your position and make yourself d clearly different from the APC, the PDP and all the other parties. And I'm afraid it's on that note that I'm going to have to end this conversation. Mr. Ayo Oloran Femi is the Deputy National Chairman of the Labour Party and uh, Abdul Wahid Omar is Chairman of the Transition Committee under the NLC and, and the other stakeholders, as he put it, and former president of the Nigerian Labour Congress. Thank you very much indeed to both of you for giving us your time.